Hi, my name is Georgina. I'm the founder and CEO of Solo, an Egyptian fintech that specializes in cross-border transactions for small businesses and freelancers. I think being a female fintech founder is definitely a different experience. Um, I wouldn't say it's just in the challenges that it's different. I think there are opportunities that are presented to me uh, maybe in a different way than my male peers. That being said, um, definitely, you know, the fact that we're even having this interview and it's uh, an exception as opposed to the rule, this like female fintech founder. So alien um, you know goes to show that definitely we do experience um, something very very different which is natural um, I think navigating that and then adding the layer on top of it where we are you know in the Middle East um, can be challenging times two but in general I think where the playing field needs to be leveled is in the day-to-day -day things that most people wouldn't take notice of but I think when it comes to leadership and really respecting uh, the vision of a woman and not questioning every move is not something that we're used to as a country and as an ecosystem. That's been challenging. Um, I think another challenge is being young and a woman and in Egypt and in fintech. When we launched in June 2021, we had a couple of um, fraud cases on our gateway. And, you know, we work very closely with the National Bank of Egypt and their risk team to make sure that uh, we're taking all the precautions. And at the time, it was decided by both myself and the head of risk at the National Bank of Egypt that we would shut down the gateway for a week until we investigated what the cause of this was. Um, at the time, I called my engineering manager at Solo, who is an older man, and um, you know he essentially said, "Okay, sure." A couple of hours later, I get a phone call from the National Bank saying, "We just had another fraud transaction. I thought you turned off the gateway." And uh, and so I said, "I did," and I called that same person and I asked him why didn't you shut it off? I thought I told you to. And he goes, yeah, you sounded hysterical when you called me. And so I didn't think you were in the right mind to make a decision. And I think that was the first ever like red flag as to navigating um, more so the culture in Egypt of an older man being unable to take direction or leadership from a woman and questioning that direction, regardless of position or merit. Definitely those comments are thrown and those microaggressions happen on a day-to-day -day basis. But as a whole, I think holistically, I can still see the light at the end of the tunnel, if that makes sense. And the people that have tried to really work hard to neutralize that balance, even if it's very in subtle ways, um, have stood up when it mattered um, and so one of the more positive stories I had four instances before I realized it was a pattern where I was reaching out to potential candidates and what would happen is they would drag it on for a couple of weeks we'd meet we would discuss the role they would get to know the team they would get to know me um, you know and then towards you know the end of the second week what would happen is they would come forward and say to be quite honest, we were never really interested in a job. We were just interested in getting to know you. And this conversation I had maybe four times with four different people. And when I realized it was a pattern, I felt embarrassed, like maybe I had done something to contribute to this. And I confined it in um, one of my mentors, who is a leader in this space. and. Uh, and he essentially offered and has been doing this now for the last four months where when I do have a candidate in mind, he'll interview them first and then he'll pass them on to me if he finds them to be serious. Six months before we launched Solo, um, I was blindsided into a meeting with uh, six to seven men around my father's age 
uh, that tried intimidating me into handing over my company as a so-called acquisition to a company that was not even active at the time. So, you know, I had the product ready, I was ready to go to market. Uh, they had nothing and they were trying to intimidate me into acquiring that company essentially by saying we work with very powerful people. It's very cute what you're trying to do, but uh, you wouldn't make it in the Egyptian market without us. And, you know, when that happened, I panicked a little bit. Um, we ended up launching six months later and uh, we are now the only fintech in that specific space. Statistically, when it comes to raising investment, they always say that uh, pre-Series A is when the gender gap is uh, quite large with female founders being unable to raise investment pre-traction. And the reason that is, is when we're betting on a founder or a startup pre-Series A, it's betting on a concept, an idea, a vision, and then their ability to execute. After Series A, it's like the level, the playing field has been leveled on its own because they're comparing traction and numbers and performance. Uh, I totally acknowledge the fact that um, my ability to execute without needing the support or needing to convince anyone of my potential comes from a place of privilege and I understand that many other women in the ecosystem are not afforded that same privilege. So I think it is important that we start um, checking where there are biases in the earlier stages in particular of a startup's life cycle because after after you've executed and performed it becomes less about the founder and their ability to execute a vision it becomes more about what they've executed my first piece of advice would be to embrace your differences you are not meant to be the same as a man and it should not be the reason that you are treated equally. So don't tame yourself. Embrace everything that makes you a woman and if that scares people, then they're not for you. Don't try to convince someone of your potential if they don't already see it. Move on and meet people where they're ready to be met because you will find people along the way that uh, don't need to be convinced and that you naturally align with. My second piece of advice would be to execute and let the numbers speak for themselves. <laughs>